Hello. So my last talk uh, before the witch hunt. So welcome to my talk, uh, my keynote, uh, first keynote this year and first uh, InfoSec talk this year, InfoSec and failures. So first of all, just a kind request, if you have ever used any of my work, please uh, feel free to drop me a sign or something uh, uh, in, in sort of as a reminder for me. I mean, yeah, it's a reverse autograph, basically. To, just to, consider, to convince my wife I'm not doing that for crap, <laughs> for nothing. <laughs> so, this talk is not about the so-called funny failures, which is usually about making, people, making fun of people failing to understand. So if you are looking for a series of fail where we can laugh and see, ha ha ha, these guys didn't listen to us and they screwed up and these people were fried. No, sorry, that won't be the case. Actually, it's not aiming to be a funny failure, so that's why I'm expecting some kind of witch hunt at the end. But uh, I think that uh, the attitude of uh, the um, InfoSec in general for that is more like patronizing, if not bullying. And seriously, I don't like that. But your mileage may vary. So this is the usual, this is fine, this is true that it's permanent problem in InfoSec, but this talk is brought about our failures, our own failures, as a group and personal. So typically in InfoSec, what you, we, how we represent, or we like to represent InfoSec, it's about winning, so a, sec, a series of success stories that I uh, pop calc or I managed to get root and whatever. And in the end, it's supposed to impress or motivate you, but you don't necessarily do, see the other side. And this is a way to be like a, the outreach uh, tactic, like uh, not seeing the numerous failures of everyone. So, uh, and again, a lot of people are make, wasting, they are stars in the wrong meaning of things, like giant stars, uh, wasting more energy. They want to impress others, while there are some people who are just naturally uh, attract the attention of other people, and I call them black holes, and I prefer black holes to stars because it's not the same goal, right? And it's not the same effect in the end, right? A black, a black hole is badass and a, a stars is blowing, blowing, and, hey, look at me, and then exploding because in the end there's nothing. So uh, there's a lot to learn about uh, from others' failures, and usually, you know, in InfoSec talks you see a lot of wins, but sometimes you speak with your peers and then they speak how, so, how much it sucks in their place, and so then you feel much better. And I think this sums out much more efficient. So just to understand that the grass is not that green on the other side, and also it's a good way to say, hey, I don't suck so much, maybe, with your impost uh, and tune down your imposter syndrome. So uh, I'm a guy who was interested, started interested in uh, uh, InfoSec roughly in 89. I will not permanent InfoSec or whatever. Uh, in 89, we were, our computer was infected with a boot sector virus and the French magazine, the local, for the monthly French publication was telling how, how to remove it manually. Where can, can I point? Can I point with this? Yes. To the manually with the hex editor. Uh, although um, the, op the opinions expressed uh, during the presentation are mine and not my employers, so fuck shit, fuck, now you know it's my, me, myself only. And uh, I, so I also do, I'm also interested in other technical domains like the video games preservation and also related to imposter syndrome. I started drawing stuff, so maybe you've seen any of my drawings. And if you want to, any of them, just take yourself a poster, a mini poster. They are free on the table. So. The talk, you could see, you could say that, oh, it's another enumeration of, hey, it worked for me, but what's in for you? And some people say, but I'm successful. And I'm like, people say I'm successful. Okay, maybe I, people say I'm successful because I'm presenting a keynote, but to be honest, I don't see why any of you wouldn't, shouldn't be presenting the keynote in my place. You know, imposter syndromes did never disappear. So I'm successful, but according to what? And behind each of my success, there are so many failures that it hurts even count counting them. And the goal of a keynote, just uh, sharing with you stuff, I think I would have liked to have heard, seen, uh, heard be, uh, been told before. And maybe it's nothing new, I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe it's uh, indeed not uh, obvious to you, but that's the goal of a keynote, right? But I'd rather share with you some stuff I would li have liked to, hear, to hear in my in my career or even very recently. So there would be two parts of the talk, like what we how I think InfoSec is failing as a group, and uh, about personal failures in InfoSec, because well that's what I think would be worth uh, sh being shared with you. And the two ideas between each part is that I keep seeing the same recipe. Over, because in InfoSec, and then I don't think there is any reason that things should change because we keep doing more or less the same, following the same strategy. 
And for the second part, regarding personal uh, failure, I've seen too many people burning out, or which much, much worse. So I think the, the first thing I would hope is that none of you burn out, or worse. I think that's the best thing, that, because I, I was burned out, and I, was I went through depression and more uh, a few years ago, and differently, I think that's the best. Nothing really matters if you burn out and if you keep receiving uh, your imposter syndrome just dra drags you down, and your management hits, hurts you, and so on. So, again, I think that was definitely advice I would have liked to hear a few years ago. So, group failure. So, what InfoSec fails as a whole? How could we improve? So if you say it feels like an oral tradition, because when you want to start a new, pro a new topic, there's not like a, a very, there are plenty of crap websites, snake oil, and then you have to look to a specialist and ask him, and then he will point to a series of stuff. So it feels like an oral tradition that we, before the writing was invented, you know? And then some links may be dead. And then this may be failed, uh, you may be stuck or not. So sharing knowledge on InfoSec is already a problem. So we expect the users to understand us, but how can we even share knowledge with the other people in InfoSec? So I think this is also a big problem, right? I will see a bit more about this. So I think we should, we should share differently. There are too many, a lot of contrasts, may, too many depends on your point of view. And then there's one paper, some are good and not. Then there's one URL. And then there is a single point of failure. The moment this, uh, like let's say 15% of the paper is invaluable, and then there is a single point of failure, and the moment the link dies, then InfoSec, it's a loss for the whole of InfoSec. So preserving knowledge, so far I think the only uh, alternative is relying on archive.org. And, uh, and there also the problem that uh, in InfoSec, uh, it's um, not just the content, not just the slides, but also the proof of concept and the actual whole uh, um, system where the actual um, um, uh, paper was based on, and we also lose that. So it's not just about file, uh, it's not just about file content, but it's also about the file structure. And preservation is typically about preserving the content, so it's good for preserve paper, but not the rest. So. Um, we cannot even replay all the exploits, and we learn from them. And now you know, a few years ago, when I was young, we played old, old school video games, okay? And then they start to be lost, and then they were the first emulator. It was very weird at first. And now it's retro gaming is so trendy that there are a lot of books and documentation about that. It's just starting. And is retro pawning is not even started, right? Can you replay? Can you understand the first exploits based on the system? Maybe it sounds totally useless now. But once we have, we'll have enough lost, then I'm pretty sure this will gonna be happen. So when is retro pawning, will, when will it will be a thing? And maybe in a few years we'll say, not just a proof of concept, but also store a whole VM snapshot of the environment, just so that people can replay and relearn from it, right? And so again, so yeah, we cannot even reuse our own knowledge. So how can we expect people to not even understand us, right? I mean. Okay, if uh, we can reuse some knowledge, but some is definitely lost, I think. And the problem also is that there is a lot of noise. So many conference talks, but also FUD, snake oil, buzzwords, uh, bullshit bingo, and so on. So this is a problem, right? Then there's a lot of talks and noise, and then if you want to know what's the best uh, state of the art, depending on for a topic, then you'll have to find the person in this group or the three person in this group and ask them what are the, the most important papers. And this is also, again, still very uh, prehistoric, right? Uh, old, uh, oral, oral story. So there's no trail of knowledge to follow. So there are first very few experts in each domain. Then there are very few milestones, only a couple of papers, and some of these papers may be very difficult to reach online. And the, that's the problem where it hurts, because it, we make fun of academia, but in the end, if you pay for them, you can still get old acad academia papers much easier than old InfoSec papers. So is the model of free slides bound to fail because of that? Why is academia success successful in that? Because they, ha they are attracted of people because they rip off uh, libraries, but at least they, they, they keep the knowledge preserved and accessible for a fee, but at least I would prefer to pay a fee sometimes than having a dead link and just looking for hash on something on, uh, on, uh, on archive.org. 
So here are a few hypothetical books I would love to buy. So the Guy Julien 2017 of the best exploits, or so uh, if you don't know, Thomas Julien is also Halva Flake. Or I would love that well, yeah, there are the Pony Awards, and there is no such book. Uh, I mean, for the Pony Awards, you just have a list, and you don't even have a link to the write-ups, and you don't have a collection of the best write-ups of the, all the Pony Awards on the specific domain. And if I would, I would, I would buy that. I would love that. And I would buy the best of Haklu uh, called Les Vacances de Poulpi. Uh, that, uh, I would love to buy the best of the, all the, be the best talk of Haklu in a kind of a preserved way with the interesting, uh, with more details and everything. Exactly like Academia, once again, has first the conference paper and the best conference paper go in a journal where the, journal, the paper is, is expected to be improved. And even, not only it was accepted as a great paper, but it should be improved, and then it's preserved. And then it's really a milestone in the history of knowledge on the topic. So my own contribution is that I took, um, uh, who, who knows 4AM? So 4AM is a guy who uh, kept cracking, he's uh, analyzing and cracking all the Apple II video games from, so from my age, so from the 70s and 80s. And he documents each of them and he creates thousands of write-ups and he shares all of them. And then the best ones, then I took, I took his, his best ones and I start to prettify it. And my goal would be eventually to have, I mean, I already started, so this is the 4 a.m. ontology, so the best uh, 4 a.m. write-ups. And this guy is preserving history, is making a software to automatically crack all the games, and all of this is documented and everything. And now uh, even original authors of, the, of this era send them their original or their beta version so that he cracks them and documents them. So why am I dealing with something that old? because even something that old was not properly preserved. And 4AM only started a few years ago. So maybe if one person in the audience, instead of preparing the next talk, just gather materials on his expertise, write some notes, maybe connect, communicate, connect with the authors to have more details, and then prettify them, optional, and share them or sell them. If they are good enough, it will sell, right? Shared content, if you don't know if you're familiar with the Bible of POC GTFO, but shared content of other people, pretty fine, it does sell. So I think it's a great signal for us that a bit like many people produce retro gaming books, then retro pwning could be a thing. And you can, you, you don't, it doesn't have to be your own content, even if you can, can contribute, but it can be someone else's content, like I'm honing my skills with 4AM's content. So another topic uh, that about InfoSec jump, uh, jumping the shark. So this was very recent. Oops. What happened? Whoa, that was a great little. OK. OK. Ooh. OK, unexpected. So uh, the, the, my favorite branded bug is that Batlog he spends weeks hyping a bug, a useless bug in his own code. And yet, the whole media wagon and everything reacted on that, right? And I. I think branded vulnerabilities are here to stay. I hate that. I'm still joking that in a few years, uh, we, you will not take a vulnerability seriously if there is no movie trailer. What's the, what's the official soundtrack? Oh, uh, you, uh, but it's here to stay because there is no reason you still attract more attention with a crappy logo, like Bad Luck, than with a CV, right? So it's here to stay, and I think it should be the opposite, right? If in France you, you start to sell chocolate and it doesn't contain 30% of cacao, then uh, the consumer association can sue you. And they usually, I mean, they win, or sometimes people blow up your shop, but well, that's another thing. Or in Germany, if there is ice cream, has to have a certain amount of cream. So basically what's important for people is, uh, is regulated. So we hate to hear about regulations, but I can't see of anything for branded vulnerabilities. And when they will say, OK, branded vulnerabilities attract attention in your company. Therefore, it's a commercial benefit for you. Now, if you lie, you, uh, trick, the, uh, you, you trick the public. Therefore, you should be held responsible for it. And a bit like the same. I think whenever branded vulnerabilities or crappy specs about file formats, you know, suddenly PDF file formats, specs, they are crappy. And yet, Adobe is making money with that, right? And then you can, they can even play F, uh, FUD with saying no one was sued or no one was fired for not using for PDF because it's used everywhere. 
and yet the PDF, the PDF, the, scrap, the, PDF, the specs are crap. Same for snake oil. Okay, responsibilities. In some countries, for messing with people and lying at people, I assume you get killed pretty easily. I don't want people to get killed, but I think regulation is the way to get rid of the, the branded vulnerabilities that I, uh, that I hate. So we know all these are wrong uh, branded vulnerabilities and crappy specs and snake oil, but on the other hand, they work, and the authors have no reason not to do them. So it's still fine and it's legal. So exactly like we play with legality and say, it's fine and I'm not in the illegality, uh, then the people that are doing this, it's fine. So it's only when we say, hey, this chocolate suck, let's put a regulation and do the same with branded vulnerabilities. That was not the, the server exploit I expected. And then the consumer association sued back. So when will the uh, InfoSec uh, co consumer associations uh, be taken seriously? I don't know, but your guess. So I think because of all this noise, it's exactly like in 83 with video games, don't know if you're familiar with that, there are plenty of crappy video games, some very some video games were developed in three weeks, and, the, and the, 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 the parents were buying games that were utter crap, and then eventually the trust and interest in video games uh, totally vanished, and then people were saying video games will stop existing, because people just say, ah, oh, brand vulnerability, whatever, Exactly like they were doing, oh yeah, yet another video game, and it was crap. So I'm pretty sure, unless something else happens, then it's what's gonna happen. So we're gonna crash and then come back, but I'm a bit pessimistic, but prove me wrong. Another thing that you always see, I'm a bit idealist here, but your manager probably wants results now. And again, short-sighted goals are addictive, so rather than fixing a whole problem, you just wait for the badness to be measurable in impact, then you fix it, and then you have impact, you have quarter results, and everybody in your management chain is happy, right? Uh, and this is addictive, right? I, I prefer, I mean, at least again, to close a bug that will close the attack surface, but on the other hand, your manager is very happy to have this uh, measurable impact and improvement, and then his promotion is easier. So again, I think all those shorted sighted goals are here to stay. Because even when there's a major breach, it doesn't make finance, financial impact. So um, that's, where the, the, that's where it hurts. If it hurts, the, the, if it's, uh, the money disappears, then a breach will be considered uh, um, bad. And then people will s want to fix the, them in the future. So nothing will change, I think. And I think who, the people who associate risk with money is insurances. And when it will happen enough, so insurances will start to say, hey, ISO hasn't changed anything, now we want better standard. I mean, okay, I don't trust insurances much, but you know, these are the people who ask you to have a shitty door, but expensive, so that you have a lower price in your monthly insurance, right? So as they associate money with restriction, and I think this is something that will, will change things in the future, but again, not there yet. Another thing. So I think we're just starting a new cycle. Computer InfoSec is still quite new for all of this. And I'm not trying to be pessimistic, just realist, and please prove me wrong. Please fix all of this within tomorrow. I'll be fine, I'll have... please. Okay, so now, totally change, totally different change, probably more important for each of us and not for all of us as a group. Personal failure, because nothing will matter if you're broken inside. If you feel like you can't work, I still don't know why I'm in this industry, sorry. I, I'm doing a keynote right now, but I'm like, I'm the biggest imposter ever. Like, whoa. anyone could probably do better. It's just ideas, I don't even show anything technical. But when you're broken inside, it, nothing ever matters. And this is the worst, because no one taught me when starting in FOSSEC, and I, was, I learned how to do cracks, I learned how to do disassembly, malware analysis, but not how to handle myself or handle other when people are broken. And this problem is, no, sorry, you are the most important person in InfoSec because again, nothing will matter if you're broken or burn out. And InfoSec makes it quite easy to burn out. There's a lot of bullshit bingo and drama around it. And many opportunists who just see, oh, you're InfoSec, yeah, it's a successful uh, domain because there are a lot of hackers, so there's a lot of money to make. That's not why I am in InfoSec, but this is something I keep hearing. And then you have a lot of people, so how do I start in InfoSec? It's like, well, we'll see about this. But it's a bit annoying to have all these people just attracted to think that I'm in there for the money. 
So first of all, if you think this is all bullshit, and if you're fine, in, and you don't feel you're burned out or anything, listen, because the other people broken, the other, the, the other, the broken people can easily talk about themselves anymore. So really listen to your neighbors, because it's worst case when your neighbors commit suicide, then you'll say, "Oops, I could have done something," and maybe you'll say a bit more than "Oops." So again, maybe it's. Really hypothetical. I'm glad you didn't even all, all, all leave the room yet, but I was, I'm expecting the witch hunt after that. But again, if you think this is bullshit, but on the other hand, if you, feel you're fi if you think you're fine, listen to other people because usually, actually, when the moment you accept suicide is actually a moment where people feel happier because they know, oh, I, they, they think I will commit suicide that day, and now I don't give a shit, and they are happier. And the people just before committing suicide, usually they are feeling well. And, uh, and then it's too late. And if you're broken, again, fix yourself for yourself. And then the other benefit is ba basically uh, that you uh, can help other fix later. Uh, you can help other fix later. Okay, there's a word redundancy here. So the most important advice I gave to everybody, because, uh, to, uh, to people who made me, and what do I need to learn is like, in for second, but not about knowledge. You will have to learn a lot of stuff. The more knowledge, the easier. But it's not going to end suddenly say, say in, oh, you have all the knowledge. But the, the, pro the problem I saw is that people started to gather knowledge, and then they were not comfortable enough with the repeated failures of InfoSec. Because you start analyzing malware, and you don't know what it does. And, you, and people ask you, what do you do? Uh, what is it doing? And say, I don't know yet. And then they say, you should learn your job to do your job better. And they say, yeah, of course, repeat that 10 times, and the malware will open itself magically and reveal it if it's a crit. So anyone saying, couldn't you do it better, or you did it wrong, is just they lack experience, or it's just your management who wants res quarter results. And it makes sense, but it's not what the whole of InfoSec is about, the core of InfoSec is about. So I, uh, definitely, InfoSec is about accepting, embracing, and sometimes avoiding failure. It doesn't mean we want to fail, but we need to accept the state of failure. It's permanent state of failure until there is a little success. And the knowledge will come. Yeah, the more the better. But again, you want to go in InfoSec, you don't know anything, it's not a problem. It's more like failing and uh, wait, uh, standing up again. So you can know the path if there is no map. So you don't know a, a path that was never explored before, and some Fail, some potential failures, well, they were not explored before. You have a malware, you have a situation. Have we been hacked? I don't know yet. Uh, can you hack this? I don't know yet. Is it secure? And so on. And then, this needs to be explored, and there's always a lot to explore. So, you shouldn't blame yourself, because other people will say, hey, it's easy. Oops, again. Okay. 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 So, other people may think it's easy, especially your management or colleagues. And if they have some experience, they'll know that you fail here. Well, you just needed to fail, and you didn't know yet. There was no map at the time. So my mentality, I don't know if you're familiar with the Shadok, but this is a rocket that they built. And they knew they had one chance in a million to, have, to build a successful rocket. So they hurry to miss a lot of times so that eventually they'd be successful. And it, after all my failures in my life, this is how I start a new project. I don't know how to do it. I will certainly fail, but let's fail a lot of times, and then eventually there will be something. I mean, even if I don't succeed in immediately, then I will, at least I will have learned a lot of those steps here. I will have learned to all these steps that I didn't expect before. So a single success is a long line of failures, exactly like this guy is doing research and he's looking for the oasis, and it, all these steps could be seen as failure. I'm, I walked a step, I couldn't find, I couldn't find, but eventually he might find. So it is exactly what research is. And if you're not familiar with this, well, avoid research, avoid it for sake, I would say. Otherwise, well, maybe if you want to click a uh, checkbox in Nessus, it's fine, but this is not the, my kind of InfoSec. And my only algorithm for creativity is just try. I have no idea if it will be good. And if it's better, then keep it. And if it's not, well, try again. That's simple. So it's just just trying something new. So every time there's a conference that tries some different structure with more, more workshop, with the interleaving or anything, a lot of people will say, what the fuck? And, and, and in the end, it might be better. So that was exactly worth this state of uncertainty of trying. 
So, and when you're doing uh, infosec, it's totally okay to have no idea what to do next, or it's have it's have to to realize you have taken the wrong path because the wrong path is again this path of trying, and then this path must have taken you very long. So you have taken too much time, especially for your management, but it was necessary for you. So again, I think it's totally okay because you learned in the process. So sometimes, well, we're human, you lose hope. So the goal is uh, find yourself a, a sub-quest. Uh, so you cannot reach that goal. Well, just mess around with this uh, on the same topic to keep the, the brain, the idea is flowing, to keep the engine running, to bring extra knowledge, and maybe later, then the, the, the puzzles, the, you, the, the pieces of puzzle you, you built in your head will connect and suddenly you have something beautiful. Or, so, or so, and even to make a cake, you have to let the dough rest. It sounds like lack of productivity, you know? No one ever tell a cook, why you? You could cook now, or if you were two cooks in parallel, you could do the cake twice faster. But that's not how it works, and especially not for InfoSec. So, so, imposter syndrome, I would say, are enemies. It's there to stay. But which one do you prefer? The imposter syndrome, where you wonder why you're here, or the Dunning-Kruger effect, where incompetent people think they are the best? I'd rather have one than the other. And because I'm drawing, I actually have two imposter syndromes f uh, feeding each other. Why could I be a good person in InfoSec if I spend some time drawing stuff? And how could I can I be a good artist if I'm doing this hexadecimal stuff? So I have two of them. And in the end, well, I fail at both. That's why I'm here. <laughs> Again, typical representation of what your knowledge is strictly about, but it's not easy to guess what other people actually know. I still think that most of us write PDFs in their spare time, and I still think that I could teach you everything I know about PDF in a few minutes. I might be wrong. Anyone wants to try? And sometimes, all you need is the right challenge. You're given a very boring task, and instead, so you start this task, and it's quite boring, and then you say, hey, I didn't know that. Oh, and let's see, this is cool. And then you say, oh, this is very interesting point here. This is totally boring, and if I think about it, I'm like, that sucks. But here, wow, that's fun. So instead, I learned that to do that. So it's exactly the same. I, I spoke with people and say, I'm gonna go, uh, go through a training on that, and I, trainings don't work with me. I'm like, if there's no fun goal, it doesn't work because I will forget things right away. But on the other hand, if I, I send myself a fun goal, like let's build totally something, something totally crazy, and then there's something to learn in the process, I just think about the fun goal, and it's fine. It's nice in the way. It takes more time, but at least your manager is happy because you completed the boring task, and at least you're happy because you reach your fun goal in the pro and you learn something playfully in the same, process, in the same time. And God knows InfoSec can be very boring. Mm. Spare energy, because uh, I don't know if he's here, acting like a diva or fighting against the elements around you is not necessarily the best thing to do. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger, and I'm certainly here because there were a couple of annoying managers in the past that helped me grow from that. And I would say Gargamel is certainly making the, strong, the Smurfs stronger. If they were not here, they may not have all this group and mentality, right? So choose your arch enemy wisely. If it's just a manager, I will say that, that is just playing the game of your company, ah, maybe they don't deserve to be your, own, your enemy. It's just a player in the game, right? So don't spend your energy too much with the minions, and instead aim for someone. You don't need an arch enemy, but at least it's really something, a good enemy or a good mentor is a good thing for you. So again, don't blame the game, the blame the game, not the players, and don't spend your energy here. I love this sentence that I can imagine, manage you if you don't learn to lie, and the guy immediately lies. It makes sense, right? So you spare your energy, the manager is happy, and, in, and then you can keep your own personal objectives in your head. So you don't necessarily need an arch enemy. A mentor or soulmate can also help. But anyway, the more important thing is don't waste energy on these kind of people. Just give them what they want, and then go back to your personal uh, energy. Diversity is also good. These days, I'm working with Mark Stevens on hash collisions. He has a very different point of view on the file formats, and it's always interesting. And it's always good. It can make a lot of difference in your work and in your life. So 
going to speak people outside your team, outside your comfort zone, outside your environment, because sometimes they will unlock something or they will give you the right idea. And definitely, that's a great advice to give. Staying always in the same team, the moment someone says, hey, you're not, uh, you're not, like, not patriotic, but uh, you're not, uh, you should only care about your own team, it's bad because diversity, InfoSec is about attack and defense, and, and attack is defense is about diversity. The moment you have a new kind of attack attacking you, that was diversity. And, the, and you, you, sh you, you become better at InfoSec when you have more diversity. And sometimes you're out of fuel, so the obvious answer is take a break. And sometimes it's hard because you feel you have to do it for your family, for your management and everything. So sometimes it's actually good to forcefully take your friend out, you know, like kidnap them, I don't know, something like this, kidnap them and put them in holidays spot. To be honest, that's a good advice. I mean, I'm a bit joking here, but you might save a few lives with that. And of course, again, if you cannot beat the stage boss, then just for, for side quests. That's uh, something I mentioned earlier. Now, others can't always share your perspective. Because when you start something new, but that would not be acknowledged, it's weird because no one has done that before. No one has done that before, so you shouldn't do it. And then suddenly, it, become, it becomes successful, and say, like, it's great because no one has done that before. Well, it's the same sentence. And the problem is that this can come from your closest friends or even your relatives. You do something, when I started drawing, I had comments like, but you never drew before. And you don't even know what you're drawing? So how can you even ever draw something that people like? And it's the, the, the worst concept, uh, advice comes from the, your, most clo your closest friends. And again, it's about follow your own conviction just sometime on your own and try. Because eventually when it reaches, a, uh, um, at the moment people will acknowledge it, then the critics will go down and thank God you did this. But at the time it was hard because everybody told you, no one did that before, so why would you do that? So if I listen to everything they said to me, when I started drawing and I was still thinking, oh, I should make proof of concept with weird files, because everybody told me not to do that because no one had done it before, then I wouldn't be here presenting. And if it take all the time to think about all this stuff that they really they convinced me to stop, because that's not how you do it, I wouldn't be here. And I, uh, if you know before Kirkami, I spent five years in the land of no uh, land of self-doubt, because I thought, all of what they told me. And it took me only five years to say, still a good idea, and there I am. So maybe that's the reason, and it took me, f during five years, I regret those five years, maybe I needed them, it's uh, my own personal failure. But it's important, I mean, it's important to think that even I doubted too long, and I regret that. Dead. If you can make big plans, just be a lemming. This lemming, if you know the game, he's building one step at a time. And I cannot make big plans, but, I just open a notepad and I write the, each of these little steps. And in the end, it makes a full bridge. Ooh, again, electric, uh, dead, oh, okay. So again, I cannot make big, big plans, so, but instead I can plan each of these tiny steps. It looks ridiculous when you look at each of them, but this is what makes a nice bridge at the end. Sometimes you cannot get motivated for time reasons, so one thing that works is apply for a talk or uh, apply for printing a book or anything. Just set a deadline with a third party. Just make a stupid one euro bet with your friend, and then your friend comes back and says, so, how is it going? And this is tiny and this is irrelevant for all people, but for you it's important. And then you think, I have to do it, otherwise he will be smiling the rest of the year. So. Uh, Philip was suggesting that we have a deadline as a service. You enter, enter your credit card, then you enter a deadline, and then, <laughs> well, it may work. Anyone wants to try? And if you don't know when to try, but, well, it has to start some somewhere or sometime by you or someone else. And what a better time than here, and we'll place than here and now. And if you don't take action now, you'll settle for nothing, for nothing or something you didn't want later, or someone else will do the idea, will say, hey, that was my idea, and it's too late. Or you say, oh, well, I couldn't do it, but you had this idea first, and maybe you could have done it better if you had tried. So another very important thing is that sometimes really the elements are against you. And really, you have your own little flame, and what people see at work is the shadow of yourself. So keep that flame. And what I do is, when you're in the worst time, and when you have really shitty work, then I, I 
it's not necessarily easy, but spare some time at the be, usually at the beginning of the day, before uh, the kids are still asleep, and you do your own personal stuff that no one knows about. What what makes you rock your boat? But at least that day, you will have started with these little stupid things that you like, and the rest of the day, you you will feel like you can't reach me because I already that day was already beneficial to me, and this is something when you have shitty task and uh, shitty management and everything and, uh, and the, the kids don't speak at you anymore. You just do your whatever. You can need file formats if you want. Then uh, that day will be, will have something for you and it will start with, you have made on purpose that this day starts with stuff for you. So then more or less it will be hard. I mean, you, that day can still be ruined but it will be much better for the rest of the day for you and do that repeatedly so because again, you cannot take care of anything and anyone or infosec or security of systems if in the end you're destroying yourselves inside. And it's also valid for physical when you grow older like me. Uh, another thing, whatever your diplomas are, I don't care. It's more like what you do that is important and how uh, resilient to a failure you are. But the diploma and everything, and if you use tab or space or VI or MX or all this kind of thing, in the end it's not so important, right? And yet we keep keeping this data, so a bit like a social media company, a data is addictive. So you keep remembering, re remembering those things about your peers and your friends and whatever, and you keep it. And you, if you keep it, and if you, you put it in the sentences of, well, this guy used VI anyway, what can you do? Or he used backslashes. Then you cannot judge, help judging yourself arbitrarily. And I think in the end it gives it, it, it leads to very stupid judgment like you remember the Equifax CS, uh, CSO where she was judged because she has a musical diploma. And I think, what the fuck? It's not about her musical diploma and it's not about the fact that I don't have an InfoSec diploma that I am here. So diplomas and all these kind of, whether she used tabs or a VI or whatever, I don't care. But the only thing to have a fair judgment is to say, hey, don't judge people. So drop some tables of metadata in your head regarding your people, your friends, and then that will give them some hair for their own creativity, right? Because if you start to say, well, he's the only guy in the group who doesn't use this and this, that, the day this person has a great idea, you'll have a tendency to say, well, this guy was useless anyway. And this is just because you kept this usual table of metadata, exactly like people were very quick to say that this uh, CSO was bad because of her diploma, even though that was probably decades before. Another thing is, don't worship. You can listen, also try yourself, but in any case, anyone makes mistakes, so please prove me wrong. Please, no witch hunt, but prove me wrong. And, but uh, when I say, oh, this guy said it, therefore he's right, this doesn't lead anywhere. And you could actually, by thinking more, prove them wrong. So please do it and please prove me wrong. And trying is a very good uh, step. So when you have some feedback about your personal project, the first thing to ask is that, why did you try? Because the people complaining and saying that your software is shit, did they try anything to actually solve the problem? It's a very good way to separate pe uh, talkers and not even doers, but triers. If you need ideas, you probably have great ideas. And the best ideas, the, you know, Finland doesn't have jungle. Finland has an ecosystem that fits its, uh, its climate, its weather. And the best ideas will not come from the other people. The best ideas regarding your team will probably come from you and your team. So, the, so you probably have to, but it's like a, a plant, it needs time to grow. So first of all, to get new ideas, avoid being disturbed, so disconnect. All devices off, out of reach and out of use, so we'll not think about the other ideas. Isolate, so either you use news can, noise cancelling headphones with background noise or music, or in the shower, well, you can, or a sauna, maybe that also works. <laughs> and, uh, or in the bar. And then, to forget your ideas, your evolution of your ideas without being disturbed, pen and paper. Because, if you, even if you write, or at least a single la a laptop with a single open editor wi uh, window, so that you don't have the other windows, the notification that will just take, take you out of your uh, idea, think, uh, thinking. And then, it sounds also weird, but speak out, not loud, but 
when you speak and when you explain, then your brain is at rest and then so your reasoning starts. And maybe you tried, when you have a bug and you explain it to an object and say, so I have this bug and then I did this and then and suddenly, you go, oh, wait a minute. And then you solve your bug by explaining it to yourself slowly or to a colleague. That's also work when someone is willing to participate. And usually it's, it takes me 10 minutes of purge. When I do that, it takes me 10 minutes of purge, like thinking about this shitty events that happen during the day. So 10 minutes of purge, and then after 10 minutes, then my mind starts to wander, and I will eventually may get to new ideas. So there is a booting time, and there is also some time to get rid of the bad thoughts of the day. And sometimes it's in the middle of interesting people. It's good to stay there, because it makes an excellent white noise generator. So I had great ideas in the middle of very boring people. So praise your boring people. Thank you, boring crowd. <laughs> or boring speaker. Maybe, I hope you had great ideas right now. <laughs> so, but again, even if you have ideas, your ideas are, don't, uh, if you don't try your ideas, it was nothing, because if you don't try your own ideas, how could you convince someone that it's good? And again, the ideas was born in your mind. And sometimes my idea of posters or file formats, I'm saying it's because I'm used, this is my ecosystem. So again, try it, because you cannot convince someone else to try in before it's successful. So ideas are worth nothing if they, you don't try. Now, this is the gloomiest part, but I sincerely thought about committing suicide a few years ago, and you cannot be more gloomy, but at least this is something that helped me. So uh, now you have the gloomiest part of Hackley, all your talks can be better, yeah. Uh, so don't take it like something that is gr gruesome and whatever, I just thought about something very simple and then that lightened my weight, the weight on me, and then I was alive again, I would say. And death is just, if you play a click, point and click adventure, you would have one last icon that is die. And you don't want to, put, to play, to put this icon before doing this stuff. And at the moment, the person is dead, you wonder, what ju it's just the last action that happened, right? Before, well, there's no restart, sadly. But, so it's like if you do a breakpoint on exit process, you run and break, and then, what will be in your memory dump? What will be the, on the stack, the last thing you tried? What will be the last actions you did? And you will have, hopefully, a lot of actions before that list die. Of course, if it's killed, accident, can predict that. But at least, the way I thought about that is that it's just an action. Now there were plenty of actions before. What do I want them to be? And suddenly, it will be all our last actions. Now, we have plenty of nice stuff to do before, and this is suddenly what brought me back to life. So, that was gloomy. <laughs> Don't take this too seriously. I'm just sharing my point of view, and I can even write proper conclusions. I don't think we can fix the world system without fixing first, without fixing InfoSec. And you cannot fix InfoSec if you don't take care of yourself. I wish you happy wins and a lot of constructive fails. And a reminder, all this about be yourself is, uh, I'm trying to say, use your energy wisely. It's not an excuse to be an asshole. It's like, oh, I'm a hacker, I, can, I, don't need, I don't follow social rules. If you're an asshole, you're still an asshole even in InfoSec. It's not like, well, I'm a, there are assholes in InfoSec or hackers, then it's fine. No. Because then, uh, yeah, we, we say you can I punch assholes. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, it's broken again. It was not nice. So, again, I really don't want people to understand, well, this guy said, me, myself, now I'm being an asshole for the rest of my life. Or whatever. Any kind of bad behavior, you know? Thanks a lot for your attentions. Hopefully, you like it. Okay, great for a... Uh... Do you want to say something? Great, uh, thanks for a great keynote. Uh, You're all hungry. Uh, people are, yeah, people are running out. So uh, if, if you've got any questions, it would have to be really quick, or you can hit hit, hit the guy up outside. Yeah, exactly. Bring your tor your f torches and forks and, and run after me. What? But oh, after we, eating, we have a quick question. <laughs> no, no question. I just want to thank you. Thank you very much, and I think I speak for many of us here. Thank you very much for your work and for this great talk. Thanks. Thank you.